morning. Welcome all of you as you have joined us for worship on this third Sunday after the Feast of the Epiphany. We'll begin worship in just a moment, but few announcements for us. The most important, of course, is that our annual meeting is going to be next Sunday at 10 a.m. after worship premieres. So I invite you to join us for that, to plan to come. Of course, it will be a very different annual parish meeting than we are accustomed to this time of year. Normally we'll pack the parish hall, we'll enjoy a potluck brunch together after worship, together um, combining the two services. And you are welcome to bring your brunch or your breakfast on Zoom next week, but join us at 10 a.m. The link to our Zoom meeting where we'll hold the parish annual meeting will be provided both in the Friday e-news and then in the Sunday worship e-news. Um, so you'll just need to click the link and if you have a Zoom account already, it will just open up for you. Make sure that you have uh, created a Zoom account if you don't have one already. It's free and easy, um, so do that before next Sunday. Um, and then there will also be instructions if you uh, prefer not to be on Zoom or on video camera. If you just like to join us by phone, there will be instructions on how to join us from any phone, a landline or cell phone. But we want as many of you to be able to participate as possible. We won't do all of the typical things that a parish annual meeting does, but we'll give you all of the updates. We'll review 2020. Um, we'll look forward to our plans uh, for 2021 in so far as we know them right now. But I can tell you that there are a couple of things already in the works. So um, join us to hear about those, about how we'll be worshiping as the year goes along. And then um, we'll also honor some of our leaders um, who are fulfilling their time in their positions. And um, we will also share some moments with each other uh, about what this past year has been like. So I hope you've seen in our e-news this past Friday and in the bulletin announcements that the Vestry is inviting you to share a few words um, about what it has meant to you to be part of a church, part of a parish community throughout this time of pandemic and national crisis in the past year. So if you are uh, so moved by the Holy Spirit to share a word with us, uh, and you could record just a, a 15 or 20 second thought, um, or maybe even just write down a sentence or two and email it to me. I'll include those um, as part of a, a medley of videos in our annual meeting, so we can include so many of your voices. But uh, just remember, 10 a.m. next Sunday after worship premieres the 31st, we'll join together for an annual parish meeting, a time of community connection and celebration, and a time of looking forward. Um, but also another announcement, uh, a little bit tied to that, but we are beginning our uh, Lenten book group. Um, not quite beginning our discussions yet. We'll do that in the early part of Lent in March, but you have, I hope, seen um, that we are reading along with uh, the Rhode Island Center for the Book, Stamped by Jason Reynolds and Ibram Kendi. Uh, this is the All Rhode Island Reads book for 2021, and we are joining that effort. So it's... Um, written with a young adult audience in mind, so it's very accessible both for adults and teenagers alike. Uh, on Tuesday evening, the Rhode Island Center for the Book is kicking off uh, the All Rhode Island Reads program, so uh, find the link in your announcements and register there for that free online program, and you can kick off the celebration with some notable local figures, including the Mayor of Providence, Jorge Lorza. If you would like a copy of this book, we have some free copies, thanks to Donna Lancaster, um, available at the church, and um, she picked them up for us and dropped them off, and we would love to give you some of those copies. So just call us during um, office hours at the church, and we can arrange to have one um, picked up for you safely. Uh, so join us for that. There are a number of other announcements and things. Uh, the new Forward Day by Day booklets, the meditation booklets uh, for each day are available. Uh, they just arrived this week in the mail. So if you uh, want to continue that, the February, March, April edition, is also at the church. So again, you can give us a call and arrange to pick up one of those or send a self-addressed envelope with two stamps and we will send you back a copy. So with that, um, I invite you to settle here to read the rest of our announcements when you have a moment um, at the end of the bulletin. But um, we turn now to worship, to the reading of the story in the Gospel of Mark of the calling of four of the disciples. So wherever you are, whatever this week has held for you, may you be surrounded in God's peace. May you breathe deeply of the Holy Spirit. And may you join your prayers 
with the prayers of your fellow members of this community and with the prayers of all God's people, now and through the ages. Let us worship. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Give us grace, O Lord, to answer readily the call of our Savior Jesus Christ and proclaim to all people the good news of his salvation, that we and the whole world may perceive the glory of his marvelous works, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go to the city, going a day's walk, and he cried out, Forty days more and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone great and small put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. The word of the Lord. For God alone my soul in silence waits. Truly my hope is in him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold, so that I shall not be shaken. In God is my safety and my honor. God is my strong rock and my refuge. Put your trust in him always, O people. Pour out your hearts before him, for God is our refuge. Those of high degree are but a fleeting breath. Even those of low estate cannot be trusted. On the scales they are lighter than a breath, all of them together. Put no trust in extortion. In robbery take no empty pride. Though wealth increase, set not your heart upon it. God has spoken once. Twice have I heard it. That power belongs to God. Steadfast love is yours, O Lord, 
for you repay everyone according to his deeds. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. After John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boats mending the nets. Immediately he called them. And they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Our gospel lesson this morning has us adding members to the group of disciples. Last Sunday, we heard the story of Philip and Nathaniel, how Jesus called them to become disciples. And we would th think that Philip was, or Nathaniel rather, was fairly a stranger to Jesus. But it is my guess that Simon and Andrew, James and John were no strangers to Jesus of Nazareth. Mark's gospel would have us believe that this happened all of a sudden and they just dropped everything and left to follow this stranger. But it's my sense that Galilee then, as Galilee is now, is a small place. They had to have known or heard about or probably even met this Jesus. Jesus had been baptized by John in the River Jordan in front of an enormous crowd of people with the Spirit descending like a dove on him, and he'd been sent out into the wilderness to be tempted and tested. And he's come back, and he's been around, but now his friend, his cousin, John the Baptist, has been arrested. And Jesus has discerned that the time is fulfilled, and he steps out. And these are his first words in public ministry. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. I am the kingdom of God, Jesus is saying. The kingdom has come near. Repent. Turn around. Look. Start this new road. And believe in the good news. Give your heart to the gospel. So, Jesus says this to the, to the four fishermen. And I'm pretty sure that they had met him before. They had heard him and seen him and been curious about who this is. So when he shows up and says, now is the time. I'm ready. And I need your help. They jump at the opportunity and they go. You know, it's commonly said, right, that timing is everything. That's the common phrase. When something good works out in our lives, a, a new job, a new opportunity, a move, we say, well, the timing was right. Things worked out and came together. It was just the right time. And then when something doesn't work out, maybe a, an opportunity doesn't come to pass, we say, well, Maybe the timing just wasn't right. It wasn't that it was the wrong thing. It was just the wrong time. So timing is important. And Jesus here is saying the time is now. We all watched um, with great attention, I think, to the inauguration this week on Wednesday. And we recognized that this was a time. It was a marking moment, a new chapter 
the time is now that was a time of opportunity. And that's the kind of time Jesus is talking about. When he says the time is fulfilled, he's saying this is an opportune time. This is a moment of decision. This is a moment of change. This is a moment to go in a new direction. And we've had that moment as a country this week. And some of the inauguration speakers spoke more or less to that reality. Except there was one speaker, and I mentioned her in my E! News article, Amanda Gorman, who's this very young woman, 22 years old, the National Youth Poet Laureate, who delivered this incredible poem that she wrote. And I think her poem resonated so much with so many people. It has, it has gone viral, it has spread, it has been quoted. Her video is up in so many places and we all wanna know more about this young woman now. And I think her star will continue to rise. And I hope she writes more. But I think the reason her words became so popular is because she was able to speak into a moment because the time was ripe. She spoke the right words at the right time and they struck a chord. And she spoke of truth. She spoke of sorrow and sadness, but she spoke mostly of hope. She spoke mostly of entering into a new day. She began her poem this way. When day comes, we ask ourselves, where can we find light in this never ending shade? And I'm sure you would agree that these last year or more seem like a time of never ending shade. And she goes through her whole poem and she offers some beautiful images, but finally she comes around to the end and she answers the question with which she began. And she says, when day comes, we step out of the shade for there is always light. If we're brave enough to see it, if we're brave enough to be it. For when day comes, we step out of the shade, for there is always light. If we are brave enough to see it, if we are brave enough to be it. That's what Jesus invited the disciples, Simon and Andrew, James and John into. He invited them to step out of the shade and into the light, to see the light of the good news of God in front of them, and then to be brave enough to be the light of God's good news for other people and eventually for the whole world. That's our invitation to ask God, what is this the right time for? Is this the right time to step out of some kind of shade and into a light? May we be brave enough Yes, to see the light, for the light is always there. May we be brave enough to hold on to the light and to hope and to step out into a new chapter. And then may we be brave enough to be the light, to be the light the world needs, to be the light we need to be. Amen. Let us pray in the words our Savior Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In peace we pray to you, Lord God, for all, all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone, for this community, the nation, and the world, for all those who work for justice, freedom, and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy, for the peace and the unity of the Church of God, for all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth, for Michael, our presiding bishop, and Nicholas, our bishop, and for all priests, deacons, and other ministers, for all who serve God in his church. We pray for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life, especially the birth of Sloane Avery Cochran, granddaughter of Dennis Burton. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, especially John McGrath, in whose memory a donation has been made to, to Epiphany. And we pray for the repose of the souls of Phyllis Cotterell and Ingrid Miller, who died last week, that all of our beloved departed may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. We praise to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, in your compassion forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the Almighty God have mercy upon you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Deep peace of the running wave to you, deep peace of the quiet earth to you, deep peace of the shining stars to you, Deep peace of the flowing air to you. Deep peace of all peace be with you now and always. And may Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you, that your lives may be a light to the world. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.